Welcome back to Fuel Up Classic. Now, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. It makes all the difference, and there's plenty more classic car videos coming your way very, very soon. Today's video is all about the MGA, a car that combines beautiful styling, racing pedigree, yet is still relatively affordable to buy and run compared to other sports cars of the era. It's backed up by simple mechanics and a fantastic network of enthusiasts that spans the globe. But this car is all about its amazing driving experience. So let's get it out on some wonderful empty roads and see just how the MGA performs. Now I'm pretty sure, just like me, if you had an MGA at your disposal, the first thing you'd want to do is get out on the road and see exactly how it performs. So that's what we should do. I'm gonna take it out on some of my favorite usually empty country roads and just see exactly how the MGA performs. So once you climb into the cabin, I'm really pleased to say that that beautiful exterior is mirrored on the inside. It's wonderfully minimalistic in here, but it's also absolutely gorgeous. This red painted dashboard, this beautiful thin rim steering wheel. Yes, it might be absolutely huge, but it feels so nice in your hands. And let's not forget, the MGA certainly doesn't have power steering, so you are quite grateful of it at slow speed. Although I have to say the steering never feels heavy. It never feels like it's hard work to drive this car. You've got wonderful little details in here. These knobs that operate the wipers, the horn, the lights are just so nice to the touch. They're wonderfully elegant, the chrome dials and we'll continue the minimalistic approach with the door handles. They're not your standard ones. They're literally just a piece of wire in the door card that you pull to release the door catch. And perhaps you could say it traces its roots right back to MG's sporting history. And let's not forget when MG was founded in 1923, their roots are very firmly in motor racing. These cars competed and they competed well. They were marketed as the, the everyday man sports car. You could drive this car to work on Friday and be at the race circuit on Saturday and it would compete with some much bigger heavy machinery at the time and win. So the MGA is a wonderfully simple formula. Steel frame chassis, body on top, live rear axle, and that peppy little four-cylinder B-series engine up front. Now it came originally as a 1500cc. This is a 1600, so slightly more powerful. And then you had the holy grail of the twin cam. But bear in mind, those cars are rare beasts. They command a premium of about 100% over a standard 1500 or 1600 MGA. And they do need specialists to look after them. In period, the twin cam was slated as being not that good, but that's really because people didn't understand the engine or how to work on it. Luckily, that's not the case, and there are specialists out there that can look after them, but be prepared for maintenance to cost probably double what a standard MGA would usually cost. So you have to ask yourself, is it worth the premium? Do you know what? I haven't driven a twin cam, so I can't say but this standard B-Series 1600 engine is a wonderfully peppy little thing. It makes a really glorious and chirpy little exhaust note. No, it's not the fastest thing in the world, but yeah, it can be tuned up to be really quite impressive in their performance. But really, what this car was built for was cruising down a wonderful British B-Road and that's exactly what it does well. You don't need to be going 100 miles an hour in order to enjoy this car. The standard four-speed gearbox is, and I know it's a saying that gets used far too often, but it's absolutely correct. It's got rifle bolt accuracy, four-speed. It's absolutely precise and it's so nice to use. Just bear in mind, there's no synchro mesh on first. 
so you have to get used to double D clutching, which isn't the end of the world, but it does take a little bit getting used to if you're used to a more modern car. But as I've said, five speed units are available if you ever wanted to upgrade it. And that means the car is a wonderful tourer. And also, if you're thinking about owning an MG, and not just an MGA, any MG, there is a fantastic support network that spans across the world. We have a number of great owners clubs here in the UK. The MG Owners Club, which the former owner of this car was a member of, and they will look after the car for you, or they will give you advice. They know these cars inside out. So owning one of these does not need to be an intimidating proposition. They're relatively simple, their parts are obtainable, and they don't cost a fortune. So what should you look out for if you're thinking about buying an MGA? Well, it's a body on frame construction. So the first thing you wanna be checking is rust. The frame, generally is pretty hardy. It's made of thick steel and they don't tend to suffer from massive corrosion. And many, many of these cars have been re-imported from the USA. So corrosion isn't often a problem with the frame. However, the bodywork can rust and it will rust absolutely everywhere. And those beautiful, elegant curves, well, they're particularly expensive to replicate if you're thinking about restoring one of these cars. One place to check is just by the door where it meets the B pillar there. It's a very, very hard panel and panel gap fit to get right. So if the door looks like it's misaligned at the bottom, chances are the restoration hasn't been done to the best of quality because getting it right takes time and that costs money if you're paying someone. So look at those little details. The car should flow effortlessly. The panel gap should be seamless. And if they're not, it's gonna cost you a lot of money to put it right, so buy on condition. But the mechanics, you don't need to be that worried about. As I've mentioned, the B series is a tried and tested little unit. And people take these cars on really long continental journeys. And I can't think of anything better. How wonderful would it be to be cruising on the French Riviera or on a lovely, a twisty Italian road in a beautiful MGA with the hood down. There's few finer things in life than that, I'm sure. One of the biggest surprises bar just how well this MGA drives and its usability is just how well it rides. Now our roads aren't famed to be the best surfaces in the world. In fact, a lot of our B roads are really quite rough and I expected it to be a bit of a bone shaker of a thing that would throw you from side to side but it doesn't, it soaks up the bumps, it's got wonderful suspension travel, but push it into a corner and I can tell exactly where the wheels are placed, the steering is responsive, it's effortlessly light and the ride is compliant. It isn't a bone shaker and I think this car, considering, you know, you're talking about a car from the mid 1950s, almost 70 years ago, it still drives like a relatively modern car. It was light years ahead of its time, and it's certainly one of the best driving cars from the period. So what else can I say about this MGA? Other than I've thoroughly enjoyed my time with it, and I'm genuinely sad to give it back. I think I might have to sell a few of my own cars and start searching the classifieds for one of these, because it's just such a delight to drive. And I know that my review has been overwhelmingly positive, but I don't have a whole lot to say that's negative about this car. It combines beautiful styling, wonderful usability, backed up by a non-intimidating ownership experience and still sensible entry into buying one of these cars. That is a great combination. And it's just something we don't see on a lot of cars anymore. So many, beautiful iconic classic cars now are well out of the reach of a normal person. And I get slightly annoyed when I watch reviews and people say it's only a hundred thousand pounds. Well, that's a huge amount of money. And I'm not dumbing down that to buy a good one of these 25, 30,000 pounds, that is still a lot of money. I do understand that. And it's out of the reach of many, 
but compared to other cars, it is achievable. And you should be able to buy one of these, enjoy it on every single sunny day possible, have a huge grin on your face, and it's not going to break you. It's not gonna hurt your bank balance every single time you want to use it. For me, that's a perfect combination of usability and exactly what a British MG sports car should be all about. It's a car that makes you smile and it makes others smile as well as you drive by. It gives you a glimmer of what motoring was like back in the 1950s and 60s. Or perhaps you did drive one of these back in the 50s and 60s and you just want to relive that nostalgic memory. Why not? Why not? There's never been a better time to buy one. Just sit back in this wonderful cabin, drop the gear down on the rifle precision gearbox and enjoy that B-series engine.